Welcome to Business Talk. I'm your host, Michael Avery, and today we've got a very special guest with us, Dr. Heidi Hackman, a Director of Future Africa at the University of Pretoria. Dr. Hackman brings a wealth of experience in science and technology policy, global science strategy, and international science advice and innovation. Uh, so with that uh, very warm welcome, Dr. Hackman, thanks for joining us. Thank you very much, Michael. Good to be here. Now, I'd like to start by discussing the recent Africa Week event that was hosted by the University of Pretoria, and it focused on the theme of Open Africa, Open Science. Very interesting theme there. Could you just explain to the viewers what the concept of open science entails? Sure, and I think it's important um, to perhaps first say that open science is not new. Um, openness has always been at the heart of the scientific endeavor. If you think about it, the first published scientific journals back in the 17th century actually required authors not only to submit their ideas, but also the evidence, the data on which those ideas were based. And so this permitted their peers, their scientific peers, to scrutinize their work, um, to replicate experiments or observations. So. Really, you know, right from the start of the scientific endeavor, we were talking about a process that in, of openness that enabled the discovery of error or what historians of science would call um, scientific self-correction. And that is a principle on which the rigor of modern science is still based. But this long established tradition of openness has evolved. It's been extended, if you will, into new forms of openness and to what we now call a global open science movement, a new paradigm for science. So today we think about open science as consisting of three key pillars. The one is about opening the record of science, its evolving stock mm -hmm. of knowledge, ideas and possibilities, making it accessible and free to all. This really is the open access publishing movement. That's what it's about. The second pillar is about opening data, making the data and evidence of science accessible and also reusable by all, subject, of course, to constraints of safety, security, and privacy. Yeah. And the third and really important element is an openness to society. This is about engaging with policy, with private sector, the media, civil society, and communities in processes of knowledge co-creation, um, in the common pursuit of new knowledge and specifically knowledge that can help us address major contemporary challenges. I was just going to say it's fascinating because often when you look at academia, it's vitally important is societal progress. But I think one of the critiques that has been leveled is that often academia sits in its ivory towers. So there's this real conscious effort to be a bridge uh, to the broader society, society and stakeholders around you. Absolutely. We talk about it as opening the library and laboratory doors uh, to society and working with society rather than just for society. That's really that openness, that open to society element of open science is critically important. And it what is perhaps interesting to say as well is, you know, one might well ask what has driven these new forms of openness and why are they important? In terms mm. of the drivers, it really is the tools of the digital revolution of the last two decades that has stimulated and driven the open science movement. If you think about it, the tools of that revolution, big data, data mining, machine learning, AI, but also you know, an increasingly diverse and rapidly evolving landscape of information and communication technologies, social media. These tools have not only allowed us, they, they fuel scientific discovery. They open up in ways that are really unprecedented in our lifetimes. The capacity of science to understand, to characterize, and to address issues of complexity and the global challenges that we are asked to deal with are highly complex um, issues. But it's also opened up new means of sharing information and knowledge, and yeah. it has democratized processes of participation and knowledge creation. So the digital revolution has been a key event in driving the open science movement. And then finally, Michael, to say, why is all of this important? We see open science as really driving the pursuit, 
Well, first of all, it in, it increases not only the rigor, but now the reliability and the social relevance of science. Yeah. It drives the pursuit of science as a global good. It accelerates and amplifies the impact of science and of science for a safe, just and sustainable future. Uh, but these are uh, very important questions in the African context, because right now, I mean, you can bring it down to the just energy transition, for example, which is yeah. playing itself out in South Africa in, in a very open way. Lots of debates around what that means. And, and we're still all grappling with this. So why do you see this as particularly important within that African context that we we really focus on this concept of open science? Yeah. You know, there is a, the tagline of the African Open Science Platform, which is an important um, new Pan-African initiative. The tagline is, is the answer to your question, and it's simple. We recognize that open science is a, both about the future of science, and it's about science for the future. Mm. Um, countries or science systems that fail to adopt or at least try to adapt to the imperatives, the policy imperatives of open science, really run the risk of stagnating, um, being isolated from global creative streams of scientific, but also social, cultural, and economic opportunity. We don't want to be caught in yet another global knowledge divide, where Africa becomes excessively dependent on skills, in this case, um, data services, infrastructure, that are brought in from elsewhere and where Africa remains as a passive consumer of services, uh, lacking the creativity to determine but also um, thrive in what is this fast-changing, data-intensive world of open science. So this is really about Africa taking control um, and enhancing its own capacity to make sure that it's at the cutting edge of data science, of open science movements, and it strengthening its capacity to address African challenges. And, you know, it reminds me of what um, Novel, you, uh, Yuval Noah Harari spoke about in Sapiens, and, and he elaborated a little bit more in 21 Lessons, that we run the very real risk of forming new data colonies if, uh, if we don't ensure that this new AI and data-driven revolution is, is carried out in a far more equitable manner than what we've seen in the past. Now, undoubtedly, transparency plays a crucial role in scientific advancement. What do you see as the main challenges, though, that hold back transparency within the field of science in South Africa? So it's, it's interesting to refer to openness as, I mean, transparency is key to it. It's also about accountability, right? Um, mm. I think we must think of the open science movement as a systemic challenge for science, which means there are there's work to be done at the individual level of awareness. Why is open science important? A lot of people are, you know, there's a lot of work to be done. Individual attitudes, um, but also at an institutional level, for example, if you think about how do we incentivize open science? How do we incentivize scientists to engage with society, to open their data, et cetera, et cetera? So there, there are issues at the systems level within institutions about how we assess and reward our scientists and incentivize them. And then, of course, there are issues of funding always. In Africa, this is particularly important funding for the relevant infrastructure that you need, um, but also for building the capacities and, and skill sets. Um, and then at a political level, you know, this is about um, needing a policy and an, an, an enabling policy environment. And I'm happy to say, for example, that there are, there's a lot of movement across all these um, elements of the open science system and as I referred to earlier, there is an African open science platform that is addressing concrete actions from the policy level to the level of institutional uh, systems and practices and individual awareness, attitudes, skills and capacities. So we're making some progress. 
And it's encouraging to hear how, how you operationalize in this, because I think often you, you, we can talk about things and I think business is equally guilty here of having endless talk shops, but not actually going out and executing. And, and this is an example. I mean, recently you hosted Africa Week, a, a major event for the university. Why yes. is it important for, for the university to host events like this one in this context of building an open science movement? So, you know, you the University of Pretoria has invested a lot strategically in contributing to the leadership of African science and African science systems on a global stage. We have, for example, a project called the African Global University. So it's very proactive in this regard, um, you know, supporting the development of African science system, but more than that, helping to position them more centrally on a global stage. And of course, then the university hosts this wonderful um, Pan-African platform called Future Africa. And Future Africa was the primary driver behind and host of Africa Week. So it kind of made sense in terms of the university's Pan-African vision um, in a global context. I hope that makes sense. No, it certainly does. And I think commendable as well that the university is taking a pan-African approach. Can you just give us a, an example of some of the interesting and important conversations that took place at the event regarding increasing the impact and influence of, of African research in particular? Yeah. So, you know, you will get a different response from whoever you talk to who attended Africa Week. But what I was really, really encouraged by and also interested in is typically in the last decade, our discussions about open science have been pretty technical around open access publishing and open data, as important as those issues are. The conversations at Africa Week were much more about the notion of openness to society and particularly in an African context about how engagement with communities, but also with decision makers in the private sector and in the policy domain and beyond can really enhance the potential of African research and scholarship to have impact, concrete impact, on some of Africa's biggest challenges. So that was really encouraging, particularly also as director of Future Africa, where that is really our mandate, is to, mm -hmm. is to uh, foster and, and convene these open to society um, engagements. Beyond that, what was really fascinating because this was a global community of science leaders that came together at Africa Week was the extent to which we looked at the really important issue of having to um, change the way in which we think about partnerships with Africa. In, mm -hmm. in you've mentioned the word equity. We need to understand how the partnerships, scientific partnerships and collaboration with Africa still has um, elements of inequity built into it. And so really reviewing how we open up um, the possibility for African science to set its own agenda and participate in global collaborations on a much more equitable footing um, and going into deep dive as to what that might mean, I thought was very encouraging. And finally, what I think was interesting and really at the forefront of these open science debates is that we started talking about open education. So this is not just about research, but it's also about um, the teaching and learning side of what universities do. Wow, fascinating. And I, I, I just look at the, the more advanced economies that have successfully bridged academia and the research and development and the IP that's developed in that space and then applied it to solve for challenges and provide solutions in those societies. And that link is so critical in moving from conversation to action to really yeah. providing contextually relevant, locally relevant solutions, which yeah. only we can do as Africans, quite frankly. Can you provide examples of the, the exciting collaborative initiatives that have emerged from an event like this? Sure. I, and it's, it's in the domain of open education, actually. One of the things that I was most excited about is that 16 universities from across the world, including four from Africa, agreed and uh, launched a new initiative called Feed, Protect, Care, 
and it is a global sustainability science PhD platform. And basically, Michael, what we're saying here is that each of those universities has now is going to identify their top two or three PhD students in sustainability science with an initial focus on sustainable food systems. And once a year, we're going to convene those PhD students from across the world and let them create the future community of sustainability science leaders. Wow. Um, that is really exciting because, you know, in my career, I have been deeply involved in setting up international um, research and science initiatives. And it's always very difficult to do this at a multilateral level. Mm. But the, the commitment of these universities to collaborate um, on such a new initiative is just, it's just incredible. And of course, you know, the, the formula for collaboration is really very simple. We're not saying put in vast amounts of money. We're just saying, let's bring our students together so that they can be globally connected. The potential for this to open up to other domains of research and to other universities from across the world is enormous. Um, so I was very excited that that initiative was actually launched during Africa Week. There are other examples. Um, there was the launch of a new global knowledge equity platform, which speaks very much to the issues that I was talking about, about looking at how we collaborate on a much more equitable, transformative way. That was launched with University of Pretoria as one of the co-chairs together with the University of Leeds in the UK. So a new global policy initiative, if you will. Um, and then I was also really pleased that after Africa Week, there is commitment from the University of Pretoria to review its own position on open science. We're really mm. making progress and headway on elements of it, but to look at it more comprehensively and to look very seriously at what can the university do to make sure that on our campus we're implementing open science imperatives um, and to, you know, to, to do that in collaboration with our partners from across the continent. So those are all really good concrete outcomes. Wow. And, and it's so good to see you bringing that collaboration to bear on what is effectively a global commons problem when we talk about climate change and its impact on uh, on food systems. You're going to need uh, approaches yeah. from different geographies, different disciplines, because it is uh, yeah. such a, um, a multifaceted challenge to society. Yeah. Obviously, collaboration is key also between academia and, and government and, uh, and, and strategic partners. And I think here uh, of the, the collaboration and partnership here with the Department of Science and Innovation, as well as the National Research Foundation. Why do you see this collaboration as important to the idea of open science in Africa? Well, you know, in a very practical way, open science requires, as I said earlier, an, an enabling policy framework. So government's position on this is critical. And we need an enabling funding regime. So the <laughs> National Research Foundation is a key player in those two very practical senses. But more broadly, um, and apart from the fact, by the way, that the African Open Science Platform is supported and hosted um, but are supported by the Department of Science and Innovation and hosted by the National Research Foundation. So they're very invested in promoting and supporting open science on the continent. But more broadly, DSI as the policy arm of science, NRF as the funder, the university sector, we are driven by a common purpose. And that is about using open science to advance this notion of science as a global good global mm. public good and so we're in this together none of us can do it on our own i wish we would get the media more involved in this because you know as someone who works in the fourth estate i, I we self-reflect often and we we sometimes focus on all of the sensational if it bleeds it leads stories in south africa it's corruption and we need to be that bridge in the communication sphere in in, uh, in you know telling the stories of open science to a broader community and i see that the event was attended by media by civil society by business what role do you see each of those stakeholder groups having to play in the open science movement 
You know, for me, it's more about, it's not so much their role about open science, but if you think about the, the social challenges that science is now expected to address, um, from climate change to sustainable food systems, all the challenges that are embraced by the, you know, the UN Sustainable Development Goals, all those challenges, science is part of the solution. Um, we've got to recognize that people from the private sector, from the media, from policy, from communities, from activists, uh, groupings, they all are valid holders of knowledge. And we need to combine that knowledge with our um, disciplinary knowledge across the disciplines, by the way, um, to come up to co-create um, responses to, to these highly complex solutions. So I also think it's fair to say, Michael, that we are a long way from understanding how best to engage with those societal partners, the media included. We're mm. not doing enough. Um, it's difficult work. Scientists are not always used to working in this form of co-creation. Um, and that is why, you know, Future Africa is, is an important platform where we're certainly not the only ones on the continent or in the global scene that are pushing and advancing this notion of engagement with society or what we call in the academic sphere transdisciplinarity. So it goes across the disciplines, but between academia and society. We're not the only ones, but um, yeah, it's a big mission. And, and so further engagement of the media, because science communication is critical to that engagement and to the success of that engagement. We need to do more of it. We need to do more of these kinds of conversations as well. I mean, and these are important steps uh, to tackle, uh, quite frankly, what is a global challenge. Uh, I think we're not unique in this, in, in yeah. uh, bridging the scientific rigor and community of academia yeah. with a broader public. But we've got the tools, we've got the technology to do it now. And really yeah. exciting to see that we're, uh, it feels like we're at the forefront of a new global revolution around open science. Thank you very much, Dr. Hackman, for sharing Thank those you, valuable insights with us. Take care. Thank you so much.